almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. merciful God, that thy church, being gathered together in unity by thy Holy Spirit, may manifest thy power amongst all the peoples, to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. beginning at the ninth verse. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually 
and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here end of the lesson. Let us read the appointed selection of the Psalter in unison. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire, and darkness, and gloom, and a tempest, and the sound of trumpet, and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteousness made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yes, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. Here endeth the epistle.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he had laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And, uh, and ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, he set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When Jesus said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Indignation. You may be seated. I've never seen that word in this translation of the scripture. Indignation. My goodness gracious. I sat down when I saw it, uh, so moved by it, as it were, and put down a bunch of, of statements that we sometimes make or hear that express indignation around us. You may have others, but let's hear these. Indignation, who do you think you are? Who gave you the right? Are you kidding me? Get out of here. You better think twice. I wouldn't if I were you. Don't you dare. Do you know who you're dealing with? Well, I never. Try me. My goodness gracious, the leader of the synagogue was indignant. Well, we all have known pastors, ministers, priests, rabbis, leaders of churches who so easily, so easily can take the trip to indignation when they, in their prissiness, see something they don't like. It wasn't, I think, so much that Jesus cured this woman who had been crippled for 18 years as what kind of woman Jesus was curing. You see, sometime over that 18 years, she had ceased being a woman with a malady and became, in fact, the malady herself. 
She was no longer a person. She was no longer a sister, a woman, a, a resident of the place that they lived. A woman who indeed was welcome at the synagogue. She had this entire aspect. She was full of the unworthiness that her, her crippledness or down on her. You see, we even in our own culture, but it has been true all through all the times of, of history, because we can't help ourselves. It is part of that fundamental sin that we are steeped in, is that we look at people and we segment them into the worthy and the unworthy. I think many of us, particularly those who are here in this space, are not so prone to do it, but it is a stone in the road for all of us. Who is worthy? Who is not worthy? And I believe in the indignation, probably at Capernaum, of where this is written from, they had a lovely synagogue there. Well, the synagogue head did not think that the loveliness of his synagogue should be despoiled by the unworthiness of this, this battered woman who had been crippled for 18 years. What was she doing here? Who did she think she was? Get out of here. But Jesus, the scripture says, went right over to her. He saw her and then moved right to her. Stood in front of her and she would look up as best she can. From all those broken and twisted vertebra in her back. And Jesus didn't wait. Didn't wait a second. Immediately, immediately cured her so that she could stand upright. So she could walk around like everybody else. Jesus cured her so that in her body she could proclaim her worthiness as a child of God, as someone who now could walk through the world with that quality of worthiness that she was always imbued with, that people had taken from her because they disdained her, because they made her the illness, no longer a woman with an illness, because that's what happens. We make it happen. All our scriptures today speak to us on this subject. Go back and read them and you will see it jumps off the page. How God cures, protects, lifts those people who are beleaguered and battered. The word delight is used several times, parse the word delight, delight of the light, of the light. That is what God reaches out to us with. He reaches out to us with delight. 
That is what the scripture is saying, that we should, we should posture ourselves to one another with God above us in delight. Because that we are community, that we are beloved of each other, the delight pours from us and suffuses us and broadcasts itself big and warm. Clarifying. Jesus cured this woman and demonstrated to everyone in the synagogue that morning the power of God. The power of God to uplift and to cure. And that this woman was worthy. And here's the ugly thorn. That the leader of the synagogue now saw Jesus unworthy because Jesus had done an unworthy thing which was to cure on the Sabbath. And the ugly truth was that the Jewish law allowed people to untether their ox or their donkey but disallowed someone to do what Jesus did, which was to cure on the Sabbath, because the feeling was that if you had been sick for 18 years, well, you could wait for one more day. You could just put up with it. And Jesus, Jesus proclaimed in his healing of this woman that no, God is not interested in waiting one more minute on behalf of anyone who is needy, but rather, but rather it is always a holy act to heal, to feed, to clothe, to lift up. It is always holy and worthy of the Sabbath, and the Sabbath is worthy of your good actions. Go to it, children. That is why I made you, why I put you on the earth, for you to be kind to each other, for you to take delight in raising the lowly. This scripture should be the law of our life. That when someone is needy and we see them and we think that we can be helpful, they do not need to even ask that you will reach out and allow the Spirit of God that lives within you to bring delight to that person and that situation that very day. Not on the day after the Sabbath, because they can wait. You know, we are called to live like Jesus, and that is why we, we bear the name, his name, of Christian. It's not easy. It's not convenient, sometimes it's embarrassing, and sometimes people are going to look at us with indignation. But so be it. So be it. They looked at Jesus the same way. Let us bless the Lord.
I believe in the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. God of God, light of light, fear of God, fear of God, God of not made, be one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who was a man, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost, the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us. Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and on the third day he rose again, ascended into heaven, and sit on the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I will be from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. He spake by the prophets, and I believe in the one holy Catholic and my solid church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity in godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Lawrence, our governor, and Brandon, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Natalie, the people of Haiti, and the people of Afghanistan, and the people of Ukraine, and those we now name silently in our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Jean, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of Our Lady, Blessed John, and of all thy saints, 
that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not ours only, but the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen.